Now presenting the RK Ultra Podcast, expanding your mind, whether you want it or not. Welcome to RK Ultra. Today we've got a great episode for you. We're going to be diving back into the past, into nostalgia, back into when spring break was in its heyday in Daytona. And to talk about that today, we have a man named DJ Dennis. Hey, Dennis, thanks for coming on. Hey, thank you very much. Glad to be here. So, Dennis, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born and raised right here in New Smyrna Beach, still still kicking, and I started DJing way back in 1982 oh. at the old ABCs. That was my very first gig. Matter of fact, Friday night, I played one of my very first dance sets when, we're, when I was DJing at the Tavern. Interesting. So you've been DJing at the Tavern for a very long time. Since 1997. October 97, a buddy of mine, his name was Dave, he had the gig. It was a Wednesday night, nickel beer night. And he was moving to Hawaii because he was going to live on the South Shore. And, and I, I took the gig, and I've been there ever since. What's, what's about more of your bigger DJ gigs? Like what's, you know, the more, more bigger shows of your life? Because I know you've been doing it around at bars for forever, but I've also heard that you've done some bigger events. Yes, I was fortunate enough. To, I was actually the main DJ for um, Bike Weeks in Daytona. We did the uh, Miss Bike Week competition. I helped run all that. I was the MC for all that. And then uh, Spring Break, it was a Spring Break uh, 1985. I was on the pool deck with James Brown and Wang Chung, and I actually partied with James Brown's saxophone player up in the uh, penthouse. <laughs> that's that, awesome. Yeah, that's that's some cool shit. And then uh, fast forwarding to 2000, I worked with Vanilla Ice. What? Yeah, I was on the I was on the pool deck where he performed. He was the biggest asshole there was. <laughs> <laughs> I could only assume. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess that's how you become a washed up has been. <laughs> 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 but it it was a lot of fun. And then uh, in the same year, actually, Paul Oakenfold was on the pool deck and. And it was a, a big DJ show. Uh, Mark Sanchez was the first DJ. Then it was uh, Diffuse out of Dallas, Texas. And then I, then Oakenfold came on. It was pretty crazy. His manager had yellow sunglasses on with a big cowboy hat. And, mm. and uh, it was so funny. Uh, I was sitting over there, and we were drinking our uh, Captain and Cokes. And we we're next to the sound man. And his little sound manager goes, is this all you got? And he goes, no. He said, well, give it all you got, Scotty. And the sound man just for- fast-forwarded so hard, the damn needle skipped on the records. <laughs> That's when the ecstasy was flowing on the deck and the glow sticks. It was it was <laughs> wild, about 10,000 people. Oh, man, that, that sounds really epic to me. See, I grew up in the early 90s watching, like, Spring Break on MTV. But, you know, I was a kid, so right. I couldn't participate. And I lived in Ohio, so I figured, like, that would be the place to be. Oh, yeah. And, you know. In the future, now I moved to Florida years ago, and it's gone. They don't do it here anymore, you know? Yeah, I know. Spring Break 85, I was fortunate enough to uh, play for MTV's private party at the end of the year. and I was up on the upper deck of the Plaza Hotel. I was out there. We had about five to 10,000 people out on the pool deck, and they said, turn the, turn the speakers off. You're playing the private party. We put the speakers inside, and I'm out on the deck smoking pot with John Cafferty and playing some tunes and was having a good old time. So, so, what, what's like? Do you think is like your craziest story from that point? Like, what was some real? Tell us some real wild times because you know I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> we all want it. Well, one spring break, me and a buddy go out after DJing all day, and we walked into the bar, and this chick came up to us and goes, she hugged me and she looked at my buddy and she goes, I want to, I want to fuck him. <laughs> I said, Well, you can't. She goes, why? I said, you got to do me first. <laughs> so you're, you're just gatekeeping his dick? <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting tactic. So, I've never tried that. So yeah. we went up to the Aliki. She, she said, okay. And we brought a six-pack of beer. I said, let's go. We're going to go get laid. Sure enough, I banged her first and then went out and drank a beer, and he banged her, and we went back to the bar that night. Oh, I mean, it sounds like that worked out for everyone. Yeah. Uh, then we then we, next week we tag team uh, her and her girlfriend. So it was yeah. a lot of fun. <laughs> sounds yeah. Makes so you sense. see back you see back then and the, during spring breaks or even at going to the bars back then it wasn't about 
sex, drug. It wasn't about drugs and rock and roll and fighting. It was about sex and more sex and getting drunk. That was all it was about. Yeah, I know. People just don't have sex like they used to. <laughs> Maybe they do. But <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. You got to understand, I was your age back then. You yeah. know, it was a lot of fun. But that was one of the most memorable ones. But the best one ever was in the Florida Keys. Yeah. Ooh. I DJed at an event called the Bartender's Bash. And I'll never forget it. We uh, was aboard this boat at Isla Mirada. And it was like 3,000 boats out on the sandbar. And what happens is you'd pay $20 and you'd get free drinks. All the bartenders would for three hours in the afternoon. And then the liquor distributors would put all their liquor on the main boat. And I was happening to DJ it. And uh, this guy comes up, I'll give $3,000 for, uh, for the winner of a bikini contest. I says, no, you're not. He goes, what do you mean? I says, where's my money? <laughs> My sound system, get the fuck off my boat. See, that one makes sense. So Might he, as well take I, it. Care. I says, you give her 1500 me 1500 He's okay. And this girl, unbelievable. So much talent. I've never seen it in my entire life. She put a beer bottle right in the middle, butt naked, squatted down, and picked it up with her twat. <laughs> <laughs> Un friggin' believable. I wish I had a camera back then. It was yeah. incredible. Yeah, was born for that. Like a good camera, not like a Polaroid camera, because that that's some that's some good. That's, good that action. was the most major talent I've ever seen in my <laughs> wow, entire really? life. Now that's the way to drink a beer. That's a commercial idea right there. <laughs> Bud Light yeah, would get right. popular. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. I know. Mick Ultra has the shittiest commercials. They could do. <laughs> they could do a. Yeah, really. But true story. It's crazy. So you've been doing this for. Like 40 years. Correct. Wow. You've been living that life, that yeah. lifestyle. To me, when I play at the tavern, it's like going out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because what are you going to do? Sit at home? You know? Yeah. To me, it's a night out on the town, and I still enjoy it. I still enjoy ha- hanging out with the people and everything. Yeah. Keeps you, know, you young. Keeps me young, yeah. I think I do pretty damn good. <laughs> What, yeah. It was, what as your as your tactics as a DJ? What what do you do to hype up the crowd? What 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 do you think your uh, your your uh, niche is? Well, as a DJ, it's all about it creating energy, and you got to build it up. And what I do is, there's certain reasons why I play certain songs. Bartenders get bored, but I'm actually reading the crowd. Yeah. And I'm watching the bar because if the cash registers ain't ringing, you ain't singing. If you want a bartender's twiddling his thumb and you got a back and you got a packed dance floor, you, I'm not doing my job. You want people at the bar drinking and making money. And of course, what you got to do is you just got to just get in a party mood and just keep on playing one song better after another, after another, after another, and bring up the energy level. And then, are you having a good time? You know, and just get on the microphone. And now I started getting on the stage finally. Having a lot of good time. Yeah. Yeah, I think that helps having, like, a center presence and, you know, having someone. Because, you know, if you're out in the corner or whatever, it's, you know, harder to really right. interact with uh, with the entertainment. Right. It's a lot of fun. Now, some of the bands that come into that place, we get along. We like a freaking frack show, you know, like me and Stereo F- FM. We, we just go back and forth with each other, give each other shit all night. That, that is true, and that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a good time. Is there any music that you played like back in the '80s or in the '90s that you think withstood the test of time and like it still goes good on a set list today? I mean, I know you try to change it up and keep it, you know, fresh. But is there anything old fashioned you still think is? Well, you know, back then, I mean, you had artists like Michael Jackson, you had Prince, you had all these other songs out there. Yeah, they're still good. But one of my favorites is Earth, Wind, and Fire. I mean, I play it, and it still packs the floor at the tavern. September. I really like that song. You know, it's got a good beat, and it's got a lot of high energy. If you think about it, it's got energy. Everything I play has got energy. Yeah. I, I, I stick away from the bullshit, you know. And always remember, as a DJ, it's all about the chicks, the hell with the dicks. There it is. It's true. If you can keep the the dance floor satisfied for women, then the men will come. They will. Right. I mean, if you got a dance floor full of women, the men are going to start buying drinks, and the bartenders are going to be very happy. Uh, Oh yeah. Because the men are going to try to get laid, and guess what? 
Yeah. The girls are laughing at their asses off. Yeah. You've created the endless party rager Correct. cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as a man, why would you go into a bar? When you go into a bar and it's just like six dudes, do you stay? Hell no. Yeah. No, yeah. You don't. You don't. No, you don't. So, yeah. I mean, I never, also, I never take a request from a guy unless he hands me cash. Yeah. yeah. Sounds about the same for me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, they uh, if there's a song that they request and they don't, I, uh, I don't feel like playing. I say, oh well, my other DJ had a private party somewhere else. I had to give him that song. <laughs> Can't afford the royalties to that one. Uh, yeah. so, uh, what song do you think you get requested the most? Like, like, is there something that just? Oh, no hands. No yeah. hands. Mm-hmm. Okay, I know that song. Uh, by, uh, took w- me a minute. Wiz, Khal- uh, Wiz Khalif. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. There no, you go. No hands. I get. I get a lot of requests for that. I get a lot of requests for um, that. Was that's probably the number one right now. Even you know, interesting. I'd... And then I get a couple of Latinos. They like to request Bad Bunny. Okay. All right. All yeah. right. Do you ever think about just fucking with the crowd and just playing something so offbeat that you know? <laughs> oh, I, you ever oh, have yeah. a day when you're like, you know what? Screw all these people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over. I have done that. See, personally, I like high energy dance music. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you notice when I play, I play, I play, try to play super high, fast dance music. And that's to me, I love that kind of shit. I mean, I, I was able to mix with some of the, some of the great, see some of the best DJs ever, like Eric Beretta, who's a new Smyrna boy. He's only, and also Shiraz. Um, I met all these guys, D- DJ X. I and mean, even when I did the Orlando scene, it was a lot of fun. So you DJed out in Orlando too? Correct. Back in the '80s, we I played a place called Jammers Beach Club on the corner of Loma and Forsyth. It's no longer there, but it was a party bar. People would dance on top of the damn bar, get drunk, and fall off. And uh, yeah, the clubs out in Orlando were wild. I used yeah. to go out to like the raves and stuff. And then when Technos first started hitting it big in the early '90s, I played a place called the Palace. It was actually in Sanford. They had over a thousand people a night on a Friday night. It was great. We'd be up there. All the guys would be up, uh, the other DJs would be like uh, hitting ecstasy or whatever, and I'd just sit there and smoke a joint and play my tunes and leave. It was yeah. a good time. i keep your money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, save the save the hardcore partying. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun, though. I, I mean, I had a great time back then. It was crazy. Back then, you were using vinyl, and hell, we'd have to, I'd have to take 40 crates of records to a show. Wow. So you've, you've been there for since records all the way up to these, like, DJ pads and everything like that. Of course. Yeah, that's all. Oh. Yeah, you I played mean, it all. Right. I've I played on uh, 12, 12 inch vinyl, forty fives, and I started mixing on vinyl. And then when cassettes became big, I would beat mix off of cassettes, you know. And then from cassettes, we went into CDs, and then learned how to mix off of CDs. And then, then when we finally went to MP3s, hell, I sat in the chair. Yeah, I drink, I drink a six pack of beer a night and just just figured it out. Come download, on, let's download get, them back into the computer. Let's get one last forty pound vinyl <laughs> DJ Dennis yeah. party going. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. But Matter they, of fact, I don't know if you were when we did the seventies, eighties, nineties review. The set that I played that it was when I first started DJing. My very first dance set was Rick James. Give it, uh, give it to me, baby. Followed by Michael oh. Jackson. Don't stop till you get enough. And Chic La Freak. I did it. What you call slip. You, mixes and all three of them me and tiff loved that actually we were wondering what was going on and then we looked at the crowd and everybody was jumping to it yeah there it is that was my first ever dance set and it was at the abc in new smyrna wow full cycle look at that yeah it's happening today yeah 40 I, years later yeah that's insane back then i had hair now i have no damn hair <laughs> <laughs> you don't need the hair man nah yeah. nah but it's been a lot. It's been a lot of fun DJing. I can tell you that. I've, I could say I played for over a million people in my lifetime. You touched a million ears. Yes, <laughs> that's nuts. Yeah, if I had a dollar for every person I I played for, wouldn't be playing still. I wouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right, retire. No. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun. I still enjoy it. I mean, you know. Well, that's great. Um, thank you for coming on, DJ. Oh, you're Dennis. welcome. Um, it was great talking about the uh, past with you. Um, if if you at home have any uh, DJing experiences <laughs> or experiences with spring breaks that you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, Dennis, do you have anywhere that people can find you on social media right now? I'm just basically on Facebook. 
I don't have. I just have a regular Facebook page, and that's it. Uh-huh. I don't. I haven't really tried marketing DJ, and I'm just. I'll be honest with you. I did my first show back in 1982, and I've been booked ever since. All I've had a, a all I have is a little business card at, at my peak. I was doing 400 shows a year. Hey, it's pretty amazing. Wow, yeah, well, uh, yeah, like every day. Yeah. Thank you for uh, coming on to our humble show. And oh, you're welcome. I had a great time. Us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Anytime. Maybe we'll have you again here soon. Sounds good. All right. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at RKUltraCast. Or you can find us at www.rkultra.com. So follow us because we'll be following you straight to the rave. <laughs> Goodbye, Tyler. Goodbye. I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs>